Some time ago, I picked up a book from my bookshelf that I had not opened for some time now. It is about game design fundamentals. This book by Katie Sarlan and Eric Zimmerman is titled, Rules of Play. I bought this book when I was following a game design course. While browsing through the pages I came across a short note about a game which was named The L Game. Ok let me show you the end result first that I created using basic code on the Commodore 64. On the first screen a short note is displayed with some explanation of the game. The original gameplay was defined by Edward de Bone in 1967. Which also happens to be my year of birth. Then if you press any key the game will start. Now a 4x4 square game board is drawn on the screen. This is done by using the standard Petsky character set on the Commodore. As you can see the starting position for the players is a red and white L shape within the corners of the board two coins. Let's first start by moving a coin. This we can do by moving the arrow, a sprite, using the joystick. Click on fire to select the coin, and then move to the cell where you want to drop the coin by pressing fire again. Once you have moved the coin, the program continues by changing the color of your current pieces on the board. This way you can see the previous location. Now you can place a piece on the board by moving to a certain cell and pressing fire. You can also undo that by pressing twice. Once your coins form a L shape the computer will change the turn to the next player, and only then. After placing your pieces in an L shape on the board, the computer will change player, and that player is then also asked to move a coin first, or place the pieces directly. This continues until one of the players is not able to place his pieces to form a L shape anymore, and gives up. Like tic-tac-toe, this could be never or just when one of the players makes a mistake. Before I started a full program I always start with a prototype with the key elements of the program I need. Here I needed a routine that could help to keep track of the player movements and a way of validating if an L shape was formed. So how did I do this? Let's go, though some explanation of the problem. If we draw a board of 4x4 four four cells, and then place the pieces of a player on it we then can see how many combination we can make. Here that is represented by the red squares on the board. We just try which and how many shapes we can form on just the first two rows on the board. For now we call that the horizontal possibilities. As you can imagine, we can create that same shape also if we move one or even two lines down. So if we look at the horizontal possibilities, we then can create the L shape already eight times which we then need to multiply by three. So that is already 24 times in total. The question I ask myself is, how to recognize the pattern without defining all possible patterns in memory? So can I come up with some more intelligent way of validating, that is, determine if a L shape is formed by a player? In order to do so I found a solution for that, folding the lines. What I did was looking at the cells in the matrix, in a different way, as if each cell represents a bit in a nibble, and then by combining the values of two rows into one byte I could easily store the pattern in a byte. That byte I could then use in the comparison, as you can see here in the example transferring the red cells. If you look at the first two rows of the matrix and place them next to each other they form a line of eight cells. Where the cells are occupied by al red block I see that as a 1, and where no cell is occupied I see that as a 0. Now the first L shape is represented by 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0 and if you calculate the byte value of that it is 232. OK. So now we have to calculate all possible values that can be formed horizontally. Do we need to calculate them all? No, only the eight that can be formed on the first two rows. The other are exactly the same patterns, only placed one row down in the matrix. I will come to that later, as we start programming. 
Calculating the values we have now the 8 values we need. Those are 232, 226, 142, 46, 116, 113, 71 and 23. Now that we have found the horizontal patterns, we need to see how we can find and compare the vertical patterns, which can also be used to create a L shape. Well, actually we don't. Why? Well, we can just rotate the matrix and then those vertical patterns become just horizontal patterns. Do you see that? So if we do some programming in which we transpose the matrix, and then do the horizontal validation, we only need the 8 bytes we already have defined. As you can see in the example, here we transpose a vertical L shape and then we do the conversion to a byte value. Then we will find exactly the same value that we have found before. Okay, now let us look at the code. I will not go through the complete basic code of the end result in this video. However, I will show and explain the main program that forms the basis. See the comments for the links to the complete code. You can download it there and use it. I'm interested in your improvements naturally. In the video I show you the core that will define the matrix variables, explain the folding of the positions into a byte and how that is used to validate if a player had formed a valid L shape. As you can see I don't program directly on the Commodore 64. I use the Vice emulator in combination with the CMB Studio. See comments for more info on these very nice tools. Okay now the programming. We start with the declaration of the needed variables. In BASIC on the Commodore it is not really necessary to declare them all up front or declare them at all, but it is good practice to do so and also describe where the variables are used for in the program. The key variables in the program are the two array, S which we use to keep track on the player moves and to validate if a L shape is formed. So let's continue with the program. We first define the data for the initial play field. We read that into the first array variable. Then we read the comparison values we have determined before. For demo and debugging purposes I also include a small routine to just print the matrix we have defined. This is the first part of the program. As described in the explanation part of this video, we also need to transpose the matrix, so that we can also validate the vertical l shape patterns, that the players could have drawn using the player pieces. And the same way we did with the first matrix, we also include the routine to print this matrix on the screen, so we can see the difference. Okay, now we come to the main routine of the program. In this part we walk through the matrix, call some additional routines, like folding the rows of the matrix into a string, converting that to a byte value, and compare it to the pattern values, we have determined before. Now that all the required main routines are in place, we can run the full program, that is, the program that is used to build a proof of concept for defining the play field, and comparing the patterns a player can make. Once we run the program, the play field is printed including the transposed version of it, then each two lines are combined as one string representing the positions taken by a player, followed by its bit pattern and decimal value. If that corresponds to one of the eight pattern values, 
Then we display that a match is found. You can download this code also from my GitHub, and play with it a bit if you like. You can also find the complete program that is really playable. Hope you liked this video, was fun to get this done finally. Until next time, keep coding.